Hello everybody, in this video I will show you how to model or simulate granular material like sand or gravel in deep soil and perform site response analysis. So I will start with uh, creating a new profile. I'm gonna choose nonlinear analysis. Uh, I'm not gonna generate the excess boil water pressure, so I'm gonna keep this unactivated as it is. And for solution type, keep it uh, as time domain. And in the new versions of deep soil, they add a new uh, soil model which is quadratic uh, GQH. So I'm gonna choose this model and I'm gonna choose non masing re unloading for uh, the default hysteretic re unloading formation. The only thing I'm going to change here is the system of the units. I'm going to choose metric and I'm going to keep the complementary analysis as equivalent linear. Then click on next. For this uh, example or for this demonstration, I'm going to create two layers with bedrock. So this is the first layer. The thickness of the first layer is 0.5 meter. The unit weight is 19 kilonewton per cubic meter. The shear wave velocity for the first layer is 150 and as you can see the software is uh, automatically calculate the effective vertical stress for this layer. As you can see it's calculated the effective vertical stress at the middle of the first layer. Okay. The shear strength for this layer I'm gonna assume it as 70 and here. In the reference curve for the first layer, make sure this is on sand. And I'm going to choose Mink model. Mink 2013 is very good model to represent the granule material or coarse material like sand or gravels. So as you can see, the model asks you uh, four different parameters. C sub U, K naught, and D50. And you don't need to worry about it, just keep it as 10. C sub U and D50, you can easily obtain these two parameters from the particle size distribution curve. So if you have the material, you can run the sieve analysis of this material and then you can draw the particle size distribution curve and then you can determine D60 and D10 and then you can calculate C sub U. And K0, which is the earth pressure at rest, equal to 1 minus sine effective friction angle. So you need to have, or maybe you can estimate the friction angle if you cannot uh, uh, determine it in the lab by, for example, direct shear or triaxial. So maybe you can estimate it based on the density of the soil or if you have uh, N value or, or N60 from the SPT, you can estimate very easily the friction angle. And from there, you can calculate the earth pressure at rest, which is 1 minus sine effective friction angle. Uh, okay, so let's go back to our model. So for C sub U, I already explained how to determine this value. I'm going to assume for this layer is 0.5. K sub Z, K uh, naught or earth pressure at rest is 0.5. D50, I'm going to assume it's uh, 55. And then we're going to choose for fitting procedure or care fitting, I'm going to choose MRDF. And we're going to see visually if this model uh, have good match with our reference. So it's good. Uh, so as you can see, G over G max is like has good match with the reference curve. Then what, what we're going to do, we're going to use this. We're going to use this fitting to obtain all these soil model properties. Uh, D minimum, theta 1, theta 2, etc. So I'm going to use this fit. And you can see the model, the software already bought these values here. So you can also plot all these parameters on the scale. You see that it changed from blue to green. So now we are plotting uh, the current soil properties on this window. So this is only for first layer. Okay. So let's add another layer below the first layer and enter the parameters. So add layer, click here. We're going to add one layer below the, f the current layer. So keep this below one. If you, if you want to add more than layers, you can change this number. So add. 
So now we are in the first layer. You can go back to the first layer like by clicking here. So this is the second layer and this is the first layer. Okay. You can also do all the calculation basically on Excel and just come to the advanced table here and just copy paste from Excel. If you have the the input or the parameters for each layer, you can just copy paste the layers here, okay, in, instead of entering one by one. So we are in the uh, now with the current layer is number two. Thickness is going to be 0 0.5. The unit weight for this layer is 20. The shear wave velocity 178. The shear strength is 78. I'm going to choose the mink. C sub U is 0.6, K naught 0.5, and D50 is 70. Let's do the fitting again. So we have very good match actually between our reference and the model that we used. So I'm gonna use this, use this this fit to obtain all the soil model properties, and we can plot it. We're gonna see that the blue line changed to green, which is the current uh, soil properties that we are using. So now we created two layers. Okay. Let's go to the bedrock by clicking on next layer. So now we are in the bedrock. I'm going to keep it as half space, elastic half space. We can name the bedrock. The shear wave velocity here is 220. The unit weight is 22. The damping ratio actually doesn't have uh, any, I mean, it doesn't have like a big influence on the data or the results. So as you can see here, the specified values of the bedrock damping ratio is used in the bedrock transferred function, but has negligible effects on the results. So I'm going to choose zero here. And then I'm going to check the data to see if the maximum frequency above 30 for all layers. So as you can see, the maximum frequency is above 30 hertz, which is good. If not, if the maximum frequency for any layers less than 30, you need to divide that layer in sub-layers and repeat the analysis again. I explained that in a separate video. Please uh, go to uh, Deep Soil playlist and see a video called Important Notes in Deep Soil. Um, I, I explained how to check the maximum frequency and how to change it for, for your uh, soil profile to run the site response analysis. So, so now we are ready to go to the next step. Next, which is choose the motions. So here the deep soil have already have some motions here you can choose from, or you can add new motions. You can scale the motions you want to add. I explain in different video how to scale the motions. So I'm gonna just choose Chi Chi motion. You can see the properties of that motions here by clicking on motions, metric, and tools. You can see the number of points, the time step, frequency, uh, big ground acceleration, big ground velocity, big ground displacement, etc. And you can even check the show significant duration of this motion. You can also th see the spectral plots. Uh, Ferrier plot. Okay. So once we select the motions, we go. We are ready to go to the next step number four. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna change anything here in the step four. I'm gonna ch uh, keep it as frequency independent recommended, as a software recommended. So I'm gonna click on next. See here analysis control definition. The maximum strain increment is 0 0.005, which is fine. Uh, frequency independent, yes. So keep everything as default. So here, if you want the results, this is the um, important part here. If you want the results for all layers, make sure you choose, you activate this option, all layers. Okay, so we're gonna see the layers, layer one and layer two. We're gonna see the motion at the bedrock and layer one and layer two, okay? Then analyze, 
it's not going to take too much time. We just we have two layers. So now we have the motions. We have two layers. Okay. So we are now we have this is layer one. So this is layer one, and this is layer two. So yeah, layer one is is the gray color. Layer two is the blue one. So as you can see here, layer one is which is at the surface. We have uh, let me see if we have amplification or de amplification. So basically, it doesn't change too much. You could just maybe two layers, each layer half meter. So then you can also uh, see the displacement in meter so this is very small amount of displacement you can export the data also in excel and see the displacement and the earthquake motions at each layer so what, what basically the site response analysis is you just like apply motion at the bedrock and you see the displacement and that acceleration time history at different layers or at the surface. So this is what site response analysis do actually in the software. So you can also see how the displacement change during the earthquake. You see the blue line this is the red line is the maximum values of displacement but this is during the motions so as you can see the red line the red line represent the maximum displacement and the blue line represent the current displacement when it shows when it's when, it, when, it, when, when when it's going through the acceleration time history okay you can export the data into LS Dyna software or to Excel and from there you can do whatever you want with the, for the with the data okay so this is the run spectra summary this is the for layer 1 and layer 2 the green and blue but it's hard to see because they are almost on the top of each other there is very small difference here at 0.1 period second here okay And this is the strength. This is the shear strain. So I hope uh, you like this video. Please uh, subscribe if you like this video and subscribe to receive more videos. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye.